So as formulated earlier, we want to do this steady state mass transfer of a species, in this case urea, through multiple resistances. Uh, this is one uh, through the blood, then through the membrane, and then through the dialyzing fluid. Notice that this case of mass transfer through multiple resistances is analogous to the steady state heat transfer where we have high temperature on one side and low temperature on the other side. So high temperature corresponds to the high concentration of urea and low temperature here corresponds to the low concentration of urea in the dialyzate. The high concentration is in the blood. So the transport occurs this way because there's a gradient from high to low in exactly the same way that heat would flow from high to low. We now put this heat uh, transfer and mass transfer side by side for the sake of analogy. If we think of x-axis as the direction of transport, then for heat transfer, the same amount of energy is transported at any section. Any section has the same amount amount of energy transported. The same thing will happen for mass transfer at steady state. Same amount of mass is going to be transported at any section. For heat transfer, we calculated heat flow um, as equal to temperature difference here uh, in convection a temperature difference divided by resistance and likewise for the other flows. By analogy, mass flow can be calculated in exactly the same way. Mass flow is concentration difference C1 minus C2 divided by the convective resistance. Then the same mass flow occurs through the membrane and uh, we use the same variable because it has to be the same. So that mass flow through the membrane is the concentration difference. Notice it's not C2, it's C2I and C3I. So this C2I is the concentration of um, urea in this case are concentration of the species inside and likewise the C3I is the concentration of the species inside and it's the difference in concentration uh, divided by the resistance. So notice I'm using this concentration inside the membrane C2I as different from C2. We're going to get back to that uh, very soon. Um, and finally, the mass flow at, uh, by convection here, C is given by concentration difference C3 minus C4 divided by the convective resistance. So we want to understand now the relationship between C2I and C2. And we will do so by looking at solid liquid equilibrium in the membrane. The urea amount that is absorbed on a membrane surface like these guys in, in this uh, greatly expanded a picture that is really a schematic, uh, absorbed on the membrane surface is different from the amount that is in the solution. So this amount absorbed and the amount in the solution form a dynamic equilibrium. 
as many leave the solution to get absorbed in onto the surfaces as the amount that leave the adsorbed surface and get into the solution so it's constantly going back and forth between in being in the solution and being adsorbed on the surface so these two concentrations are different however they are related because if there is more concentration if there's more urea in the solution there's going to be more in the membrane okay so if there is more in the solution then there is more adsorbed and this relationship which is often nonlinear but the linear part of it if we linearize over a small concentration range that is called a k star which is a a um, distribution coefficient or it's the ratio between concentrations in the adsorbed phase and the concentration in the liquid phase so using these k star k star is going to be the c2i which is concentration in the membrane and then c2 which is concentration in the liquid phase so this is what relates C2I and C2. And it's the same way for C3I and C3. So the concentration inside the membrane and concentration outside are related by the same uh, K star, which is called the distribution coefficient. Now back to the problem we're working on we now have to uh, try to combine the three equations that we have uh, so what before that we convert the equation for the membrane from c2i and c3i in here to c2 so i plug in for c2i as c2 times k star from the previous slide and c3i equal to c3 times k star so that leads to this expression for the uh, diffusion through the membrane we now want to combine these three equations and to do that we write c1 minus c2 is equal to n a x that's the mass flow times one over h m a then for c2 minus c3 i write n a x times delta l over k star d a b a and then c3 minus c4 is equal to n a x times um, 1 over h m h m 2 a and this is h m 1 a so if i add these then i get c1 minus c4 is equal to n a x times 1 over h m 1 a plus delta l over k star d a b a plus 1 over h m 2 a okay and that simplifies to NAX is equal to C1 minus C4 over these three terms this one this one and this one so we notice that these three terms are really 
resistances so this is my convective resistance on the blood side so that's the convective resistance of one side then this is the diffusive resistance and then this is the other convective resistance in the dialyzed side so if we draw this quickly then we have convective resistance here and then uh, diffusive resistance and convective resistance so three re resistances uh, this is the convective resistance on the outside and then this one is the convective resistance on the inside here okay um, so the resistances in this case are in series so they get added so mass flow which is this n a x is equal to concentration difference this is the total concentration difference uh, th that's the driving force right this is the driving force from high concentration of urea to low concentration divided by the summation of all the resistances so here is the summation of all the uh, resistances so in this case the resistances are in series so it has to go through all of them uh, and and therefore uh, we get addition of all three resistances now you know uh, in heat transfer we showed if this is not the arrangement if the resistances are parallel then of course we cannot add the resistances like this